Our European astronauts are trained at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. Alexander Gast was selected from a pool of more than 8,400 candidates. ESA is not looking for daredevils, but professionals who are able to keep their cool even in extreme situations, and who are able to work in diverse scientific disciplines. All in all, it's a big science kit we can use to construct all kinds of experiments we want to conduct in a highly sterile environment. What you see up here, these two optical modules, are a particular experiment investigating the diffusion of liquids under weightless conditions. This centrifuge can create artificial gravity five times as strong as that on Earth. Alexander Gast loves challenging himself to the extreme. Before he became an astronaut, he was a geophysicist who studied volcanoes. He worked on volcanoes in New Zealand and the Antarctic. The faster it turns, the more Alexander Gast has the feeling he's standing straight. The researchers hope to create artificial gravity that will allow future astronauts to engage in physical fitness training in space. You can certainly feel the blood traveling down. It is hoped that someday in the future, it will be possible to better cope with the side effects of weightlessness. The ATV is an unmanned space transporter. ATV brings cargo to space and is piloted remotely. In case of an emergency, the astronauts on board need to be able to intervene in the docking procedure. It's always a tricky situation when spaceships dock onto the ISS. Maximum precautions are taken to ensure against a leak and prevent catastrophe. The ATV is Europe's biggest contribution to the International Space Station. To understand the significance of the European Space Agency, you really just have to take a close look at the space station. One third of the station's habitable modules were built in Europe. The space station relies on the European space transporter ATV, which prevents it from falling by always pushing it into a higher orbit and bring supplies. We have a powerful booster rocket that's internationally renowned, the Ariane. And there's a European on board the space station about half the time. You can really tell that the Russian Space Agency and the American NASA see ESA as an international partner. And they really count on the ESA. At NASA headquarters in Houston, Texas, Alexander Gast is training in the world's largest indoor swimming pool. It holds 23 and a half million liters of water and is more than 12 meters deep. In the pool is a life-size replica of the entire space station. Together with his American colleague, Alexander Gast is getting ready for his first mission outside the space station. Later, the real thing will be very similar but much more dangerous. Of course we know that a lot can go wrong. We've seen it in the past, and that's why our training program lasts so long. We have to be able to deal with all kinds of situations. We train procedures for many different emergencies, for anything that could happen, plan A, plan B, plan C, and that's how we prevent ourselves from feeling we've lost control in case of an actual emergency. Because that's the feeling that causes people to be afraid, when we feel that we're no longer in control of a situation. And the training, the long training program, tries to avoid just that. For six hours without a break, Alexander Gast practices under simulated weightless conditions. 
Later in space, the missions outside the station will take just as long. Divers are on hand for the astronaut's safety. The training session is observed from a control center that also gives the two astronauts instructions. It's a unique place to work. Nowhere else is it possible to so perfectly simulate weightless conditions and practice performing tasks on the space station's exterior. Part of the training involves unexpected problems that require the astronauts to improvise and come up with solutions. EVA, extravehicular activity, is the official term for a spacewalk, a mission outside the space station. Later in space, the success or failure of these EVAs will be critical for the operation of the space station and the safety of the astronauts. They have to repair damage on their own or replace defective modules. Today, the instructors have planned a dangerous challenge for Alexander Gast. NASA colleague Clayton Anderson receives instructions that Alexander Gast cannot hear. The commands are issued by the control center. My guess is you will see the RGMCs. Yeah, I know, I know. The simulated emergency is a sudden loss of consciousness. Alexander Gast has no idea what is happening. Clayton Anderson isn't reacting. That means mortal danger. Alexander Gast must act quickly. The unconscious astronaut must be brought back into the space station as soon as possible. He only has a few moments' time, and if this were a real mission in space, it would mean the difference between life and death. After six hours, the training session is over. Basically, it's like running a marathon the whole time. And when you're doing exercises like incapacitated crew member, where your colleague is unconscious and you have to get him back to the airlock as fast as possible, it really pushes your limits. I can tell, my hands, my muscles are exhausted, and basically it's like that every time I take off the suit. 